goes. Turn this on, see where we're at. All right, let's see if it's warm enough. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about how you can build a hybrid electric bicycle using parts you can buy on Amazon, and we'll also be talking about the benefits of doing so. So when I say hybrid electric bicycle, I mean a gasoline electric bicycle, and specifically a series hybrid electric bicycle, which means that the gasoline engine does not drive the wheels, instead it just charges the battery. So you can probably see where I'm going with this, uh, you just need a generator and a charger that can charge your battery. All right, let's talk about why you might want to do this. So the main reason is it's a lot more cost effective than buying a massive battery to take you on gargantuan long trips that you might want to do. And the running costs are pretty minimal. The biggest thing on long trips is you're actually, you increase your average speed because normally you would need to stop and charge but with the engine, you can just keep going and fill up with gas. So you greatly increase your average speed, even though your top speed might not increase at all. In my experience, I almost doubled my average speed on long trips. So if you want to build a hybrid electric bike, here's how I went about it. You need a big loud box and a smaller, slightly quieter box. So obviously this is a generator and this is a charger. So you can't just use any generator and charger combination. I mean, you could, but it's not gonna provide you with the highest efficiency. So I have a 1000 watt BBS HD system on my electric bike. So what I got is a 1000 watt inverter generator. This is because if I want to be able to keep up with usage, I need the smallest generator I can so it can run as efficiently as possible. Gasoline engines are much more efficient at higher loads than versus a lower load. This charger is rated at 720 watts into the battery and a little over 800 from the generator. So we're running at about 80% capacity, which is right in the sweet spot of where you want to be. All right, let's talk about wiring. Pretty simple. All you need to do is plug it in, turn the generator on, and this, what I did was I had the output leads from the battery that go to the controller, and I have a connector that connects this in parallel with that, so it'll charge the battery just fine through the power lead, and we won't be putting too much power through a charge port. All right, just to give you guys a better visual of how I've wired the charger up. So this is the charger wire, right? And this is the leads from the battery. So it's basically just in parallel with those. And then this goes to the controller. It's pretty simple. We're going to compare two ways of going really far on a bike, which is big battery. and hybrid. So cost, the hybrid system cost me about $435. An equivalent battery that could go 200 miles in a day is about five kilowatt hours. A system like that might cost you around $1,500 not to mention the extra weight. So already we're way below this cost for going that far. And this is something you're only gonna use like maybe once a month, if, if that. So an average speed, it's about the same. But, for the small system, for the small battery, because you have to charge, so your average speed would be about 
11 miles per hour with a small battery and a 360 watt charger. This could obviously increase if you have a bigger charger so you can charge faster. All right, so the efficiency of a hybrid system, especially if you just buy a generator off of Amazon, is pretty crappy. It's around 18% in my experience, which is not too bad considering what well, it's a small Chinese engine, or at the minimum, 160 MPG, which is about on par with a four-stroke uh, gas-powered bike kit that you would put on a bike without having an electric system on there. But that's the minimum. You can increase that to 200 plus MPG by cycling the generator on and off and going slower. Not to mention, you can always just use the battery if you don't have that much of your trip left and you can also, you can increase your efficiency that way. The fully electric system, of course, beats the crap out of the gas system with uh, 1685 MPGE or about 20 watt hours per mile if you're going around 20 miles an hour. The minimum I've observed is around 30 watt hours per mile if I'm going quickly. All right, so with the comparison out of the way, practically this generator has about a 0.6 gallon tank and I have around 40 useful miles of range on my battery or 30 if I am going a bit quicker So that gets me about a hundred miles of gasoline only range and then Another 20 of wiggle room if I've ran down my battery by going faster So I'll always be able to just go to a gas station and fill this up again For those of you trying to build this yourself. I'll provide links to both of these products in the description if you would like to buy them. Uh, this charger in particular has been very resilient. Uh, it has survived multiple impacts from the bike tipping over because it's so top heavy. And it's also just survived being in the rain. Uh, something's rattling in there, but still seems to work. So we'll, we'll, we'll hope, but you might wanna install a protective cover to it uh, just to ensure it doesn't get you know wet inside but I've had pretty good luck with it so far. The farthest I've gone with this system is around 120 miles. That was in the middle of January during kind of a snowy period but it performed very well and you know for pretty much no effort on my part except for putting on the bike it you know works pretty well. So I would recommend building one if you want to go far on your e-bike and don't want to pay for five kilowatt hours of battery. If you enjoy this type of content, remember to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm, and thanks for watching.